into warped space to fight the force of chaos. Deep in a parallel universe where nightmares are real. The ultimate encounter is here. Space Crusade, now with a new adventure pack. Hi, welcome back to Nethermost Hobbies. Uh, today we have something a little different than our usual hero quest. We're going to be doing this Emperor's Champion, this older resin sculpt of it. You can see I've done a custom base, added some bits and bobs all over to kind of customize them, make them a little different. Uh, this whole video is going to be a little different as this is a story of failure and perseverance. And uh, we're going to take an airbrush to prime it in a way that I don't normally do. Okay, so I, the airbrush prime starts normal. And this is where everything was, I had a plan in my head. I have a, a black armor recipe that I like to do, you know, for even my personal um, black Templar kill team or, or whatever, space marines. Whenever I do black Templars or black armor in fantasy, I have a recipe I do which is a version of uh, Sonic Sledgehammer Studios kind of dry brush method. Um, that's what I usually do. And I probably should have just stuck with that and, and modified it that way. But instead I stuck Dark Reaper in my airbrush and tried to do a Zenithal with Fenrisian Grey and it, it really looked awful to me. It, it didn't look anything like I wanted it to. I thought it would be a good start and then we would tint it from there. But really, it, it wasn't good anything. It looks cool here. <laughs> it does. It looks kind of cool here. But maybe if I had just tinted it from here, maybe if I had just put Nuln Oil on it or, or a thin wash, it would have been good. But instead, I thought, you know, I've got all these new tools, right? Since the last... It's Time that I painted a space marine. It had been quite a while, and I was putting this one for a, a painting competition, like a local painting competition. Uh, so I wanted to try all new things. That's why we got this zenith all the way it is, which, you know, doesn't look that bad to start with. It looks kind of cool. But then instead of just putting a wash on it, I'm like, let's put contrast on it. Let's do that. And. You'll see what happens, or at least I hope you see what happens. I wasn't happy with the result. It was a thin down, like, you know, five water to, to two black Templar. And, and we got this. And it, you can see it's really kind of shiny. It's really blotchy. It did not go on well at all. I don't know if that was me rushing because of the deadline I, I started doing this quite late into the the competition schedule so it was literally like two days before the competition so you know it could be just that i i was rushing and all this could have worked out but regardless we watered it down it got shiny and blotchy i tried to clean it up with dark reaper and then panicked and thought ah oh, screw it let's go back to what we normally do let's let's dry brush that Fenrisian gray because now everything's so dark that Zenithal's freaking gone right and and so I just start trying to to course correct as much as I can uh trying new things seeing it doesn't work try a new one doesn't work uh here I put Nuln Oil Gloss because I wanted it to really go into the recesses I again I probably just should have done Nuln Oil regular uh, maybe maybe even just thin down a little bit uh, because the shine the gloss that it gave just emphasized a lot of things that I didn't like about the undercoat it just it just made me feel like everything uh, that I didn't like about what I had painted already was more visible then we go to Fenrisian Grey here. I'm thinking maybe if I put some highlights in there, we'll do it. So again, it had been a while since I had done any sort of 40k Space Marine stuff, and and I've changed the way that I paint or that I like to do highlights and midtones and whatever. I don't do the the edge highlighting, like the the razor thin edge highlighting anymore. That Games Workshop tends to promote, right? Which looks cool, but 
I don't usually do that and so I was trying to you know take some of these curved forms and, and think in my brain how, do, how does this interact with the light started with the bolts went to the belt I hated it <laughs> it looked like trash I tried to clean it off with uh, with water right away you can see right there it just oh what a mess so I tried to thin it down go back even even lighter with that and Rizzo gray and and just not go so so stark and bright uh, just I really wasn't liking it and this might happen to you when you paint you might not like what you're doing you might not like what you're seeing um, and the only thing to say to that is to trust the process right you can it's paint you can paint over it and if you if you have the patience you can strip it and paint it again and if you're painting with thin enough coats thin enough layers you might not even have to you could just paint on top like really just take this is a testament to taking chances and being okay that the chance didn't pay off uh, understanding that you know you can fix it that you can alter it you can change course you know you're not on a railway you're not you're not stuck you can really you can come back from this you can adjust and, and you can learn things about the process what you like to do what you don't like to do or what could work better next time so after painting some wider highlights on this guy just more broad mid-tone highlight with that thin down Fenrisian brought it up I was satisfied I knew I wanted to do more but I stepped back I thought, okay, we got way more on this model to do. Let's take a break. And that's always good to do because you might objectively see things when the rest of the model is painted or when you've taken a break, right? Like both of those things can, can help you. Uh, taking a break from what you're working on to get a clear, fresh head or if there's a lot around those areas that aren't painted, painting those areas, filling them in, can help you to identify and, and look at what you're you're painting in a in a different light, really, and and help you get there uh, to to a better place. So uh, from here, because we had such a dark, uh, I'm just going over all the stuff that I know is going to be different colors, right? So. Uh, I know that I'm gonna do the all the little accents and stuff. So just go around your model and, and pick that out. And here you can see I'm doing the eyes. You know, just really anything to not do the armor, <laughs> right? Uh, anything metallic, I'm avoiding because metallics usually have pretty good coverage. And with this done, we can see how everything really looks. So. With that done, I, I went back to the armor. I could see, oh, you know what? I want some more depth to it. And so you, it might look like I'm doing the exact same thing over again, but I learned from the last time I did this Black Templar wash that I really want it to be incredibly thin. And I used a different medium for it instead of just uh, some water. Um, I used a different medium uh, to cut down on the gloss. And I'm painting right on top of it. Um, yeah, it's really, I, I could, probably could have used Nuln Oil, but uh, I, I really wanted to, I guess, have a little more control of the depth to it. And Nuln Oil, I feel like, would have been a little too light. Either way, that's what I did. Uh, it darkened everything down, deepened it, and I went in with the Dollar Store White rather than Finn Rizzi and Gray to really pick out those rivets. Uh, now that I could see this darker tone, this this more contrasted armor, and, and I could have a better vision of like, okay, this is where it's going, I could identify areas that uh, I could really make that contrast, that, that popping, pinging highlights, I could really make the details show. And so switching it up and using a white for the rivets uh, really, really was 
you know, the next step in that. And here again, right, instead of using the Fenrisian gray for highlights, uh, I'm using gray sear, right? And that's just another change. I knew that I wanted a cool highlight, but I, I wanted it to be different from the blue. I feel like the, the Fenrisian gray, usually that gives me a nice dry brush result or, or a nice result. I just wasn't getting it this time. I changed it up and you know what? I got a lot happier with a cool white with the gray sear. Uh, and you can see I've changed the highlight where now I'm kind of merging uh, like an edge highlight with my more wider highlights, right? I'm doing kind of like an in-between and it's it's giving me a look that I'm much, much happier with. And I feel like looks a little more stylized, right? Um, it's almost, <laughs> maybe this is arrogant, but it's almost uh, non-metallic metal, but obviously not accurate, right? It's it's more following areas that I want, you know, like the corners and the edges, areas that I feel I can have nice and sharp highlights that isn't just restricted to an edge highlight. Because again, like I've I, I've moved past that in how I paint. Like I, it's not something that I, that I like to do. I don't enjoy doing all the tiny little. Uh, edge highlights. I, I want to do something more voluminous, right? So it's something that I don't do anymore, or try not to do, or or do sparingly, because uh, it's it it's not as enjoyable for me anymore to do it like that. Uh, as cool as it can freaking look, right? To really <laughs> uh, outline everything really stark. Uh, but yeah, so here you can see that that's what I'm doing. I'm going in with that that gray sear, that lighter kind of white cool gray. Uh, and just going in and doing all the things that I wanted to do before, but in a way that I'm more happy with. Volupus Pink. Uh, I like using Volupus Pink in lots of stuff. I use it all the time for uh, sword sheaths. I think it, it's a really cool, like, noble regal color. You know, like nobility in, in fantasy or in history. They used purples, right? Um, and, and violets and, and like, deep blues because the the dye was so expensive right but anyway i've sort of like linked that to uh like sword sheets and stuff i really like having a, a pink or or purple uh sword sheath all the time I, I think it gives a nice pop of color on a miniature that could be more neutral or monotone so here we go skeleton horde we're gonna do this for all of the wraith bone parts that uh I guess I shouldn't say all the wraith bone parts because that laurel isn't gonna be skeleton hoarded up. But I all all the like pale white parts, like the cloth, the impurity seals, or impurity, the purity seals, <laughs> all the cloth, the purity seals, um, and his his cool shoulder pad thing. Uh, with the shoulder pad, we only need to do the 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 outermost line because it saves time. Right, we can we can build up a, a more white shield, um, easier if we just uh, avoid the the center. We don't need to wash the whole thing. Snake bite leather for that little gun holster. Just another little pop of color. Could have done it black. Could have done it gray. Could have done it whatever. But I want. It, he's already all black. It's I want some more color on there where I can get it. Now we're doing the metallics. You notice that we don't have metallic blocking on this one. And that's a result of our really dark prime, right? Everything's been primed basically black, except for that zenithal um, of, of like really dark colors. So it's trickier. So uh, it, we don't do, or at least I don't do, the, the blocking that I normally would on, on a lighter primed miniature. Uh, and instead, we just put that metal right down. So all the gold stuff, uh, is going to be hit with his Retributor, the Hilt of the Sword, uh, his Aquila on his shield, uh, shoulder pad. I just keep saying shield, but it's a shoulder pad. Um, the trim on his other shoulder pad. Uh, yeah, and then just like some of the iconography stuff. If you have this older model, you know, you might not have a lot of the extra stuff that I shoved on him to really bulk out his form, make him cool looking. 
Uh, and that's fine, right? You can take what pieces uh, of this tutorial that you need and apply it where you want. And here, you know, that's why this part's called the turning point. I could really see everything coming together. That armor looked like something that I was not just happy with, but I felt ownership of for, for how I like to paint. I felt like, oh yeah, that's that's how I do this armor, right? It's, it's not even how I normally would do it, but it got to a place where I felt like, wow, this is like the next level for like a champion character or, or an iconic character, you know, like an HQ or something. I felt really proud of that, uh, being able to, to persevere and, and come back from a look that I really hated and was messy and muddy and gross. Uh, so here we are with the wraith bone, and we're just coming in and cleaning up. We're cleaning up the shoulder pad. We are doing quite a few layers, uh, building up on the, the cloth, right? So, you know, you can see down there that that little flap is quite bright. It's just, you know, build up some layers, thin it down. You know, what does Duncan say? Two thin coats? Do a couple. Slow and steady sometimes, right? I know I don't always thin down my paints. But, you know, sometimes you gotta do it. You just gotta do it. You'll get a better result. And that's the cloth on this one. You know, you get a much better result if you do some thinner uh, built up depth. Uh, so take your time on, on that. I know now we're on the Retributor, you know, all the gold and, and Reichland Flesh Shade. We're doing our normal metal technique, but it's, we gotta say it, we gotta talk about Gotta talk about that cloth. It's important. He's covered in it. <laughs> All these little details. Otherwise, this guy's just a big black blob. You know, we, so we gotta talk about him when we got a chance. Uh, here we are. We're doing gunmetal. I'm doing underneath the vents. I normally wouldn't do the vents, but because this guy is just all black, we gotta pick our battles. <laughs> you know, uh, so I picked that battle and I thought, you know what? I'll do the vents. You know, I'll do those events that I don't normally do because it's going to make the rest of the model look really good. So here we go, dry brushing some metallic on the sword. I had an idea in my head of like a cold, because it, it's supposed to be like a weird otherworldly black metal, right? That there's only like 12 of these swords or something. I don't know the deep lore, so maybe my numbers are wrong, but... You know, I, I am aware that there's only supposed to be few of these swords, and they're very special black metal. So, uh, I, I tried some things. You'll see more later. Here we go with uh, bringing that mid-tone gold back up. You know, just like we normally would. That's kind of like the only part of this miniature that's very bread and butter. Now we're doing all the tiny little, you know, accent highlights, right? This is this is where we really get to pick out the itty bitty details. So, like, I don't usually <laughs> do this much detail on my purity seals, but you know, this was more of a, a character piece, right? It was for a competition. I got really expired. I've had this model for like years, so yeah, we were really going to be doing those little highlights on the on the the wax of the purity seals and you know uh, on this laurel right all these little tiny leaves getting highlighted up but at this point i was so satisfied right i i really felt like damn this is coming along we're almost done this is going to look great I, I felt really satisfied even if i don't win which i didn't <laughs> not even close there was some mad competition this year uh but just just the mistakes and where i'd come from i felt really proud nonetheless really happy here we go our chrome heck out all those little hot pings all over really make that gold stand out learning that for from non-metallic metal and applying that to true metallic metal you know about like the white highlights and whatnot in your metals uh and then applying that with with a chrome or whatever for for gold or or really anything really i feel like elevated the the look of of my metallic painting really added some some life to the the metallics right i have a bunch of old zombie side minis that 
I'm going back and going over and that's something that I've noticed that I'm missing is a lot of these highlights and midtones even on metallic metals I was like ah it's metallic you know it's true metallic it's it's doing the job right and when I'm looking at them now they're so dull and I'm just going back over them and adding just those extra little layers right a highlight here a shade there so here we go with this strange black metal sword right I wanted it to be like a like a black steel and so I'm using the true metallic to blend into the black undercoat and then here you can see using the null oil to feather out that black center shine mark right that the black in the center is like a shadowed shine the silver at the edges is just like your power sword right like that's your re hyper reflective areas or like that's what the power is running through right um and we're just mimicking that we're just doing that um but with a true metallic and, and null oil right you can see that i also highlighted some edges of the the letters i want to make them pop too so here abaddon black we got to make a faux uh like hole in his sheath i did i ended up doing like two coats on there because the coverage was not good and then boom we're just doing some standard dry brushing with shades on top and then like more dry brushing uh groundwork right just accentuating the shadows and whatnot i didn't bother doing uh like colorized for that that piece of decorative terrain on there the little bit um of, of the whatever it's like the templar cross and whatever didn't bother i thought like let's just add crazy contrast and shadow on this thing and just make it all kind of fit thematically right and that's all it is picking that back out at this point i was feeling like accomplished you know i come over uh, a big hurdle <laughs> made it out alive on the other end here we go this is something we haven't done on the channel yet uh buddy we're doing a decal so with a lot of warhammer or 40k age of sigmar whatever there's a, a lot of decals you can use and so here we're gonna put a what is it then an iron cross on his shoulder pad so what i was doing previously was putting down a coat of gloss varnish as a nice surface to have underneath it, it helps blend the edges and stuff so uh, we soak our little decal in some water for a bit and we transfer it onto the gloss varnished surface uh, you can see I'm poking it around if you need to you just get some water on your brush and move it around a little bit and here I have a q-tip and this will help uh, gently press the decal down and absorb some of the water so as the water comes out it's not going to just leak out and be a surface that it skirts around on it's gonna absorb it uh, while you're doing it and be very gentle and you could even nudge it into place a little bit more too so here we are just back with the gloss coat i think i'm using art coat and you just put it on top we do that on top and on the bottom uh, to help the edges of the decal blend into the miniature surface so that there's no bump or, or defining line. And then we just have Abaddon Black here to black up the rim. I like a nice uh, black rim on all my display miniatures, or army miniatures, anything with a fat rim, give me that black rim. I'm not a goblin green guy. <laughs> there you go there we have it a huge ordeal a lot of rambling uh, I know it wasn't a traditional tutorial but I hope that uh, with the final product and the journey along the way you learned a lot you know I, I hope we came to an understanding of a lot of cool concepts in miniature painting as well as come to have a, a, an interesting tutorial on how you could paint your Emperor's Champion if you want to see more 40k or you know age of sigmar or anything you know games workshop related let me know in the comments down below we're still going to be trucking on that hero quest don't you worry uh this is a little break in the interim my camera's in for repair so you know hopefully next week we uh got that back and we're back to filming hero quest
with that, we're at the end of the video. You know, so like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, feel free to give the thummy downy. But I hope you like a thummy uppy. Uh, <laughs> if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that bell notification. All right. And with that, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.